Welcome to another episode of the Clinical Career Collective SOAP News. For those of you who are new to us in our mission, C3 is a professional development community for the mental health professional at large. We are here to support you so that you can learn, advance, and become the clinician the world needs now. To find us on our website, please go to www.clinicalcareercollective.com or on our YouTube channel called SOAP News. And of course, we're extending an invitation for you to join us at our C3 Facebook page at Clinical, the number two professional. That's at Clinical Two Professional. And lastly, I'd like to ask you to check out my LinkedIn page at Clinical Career Collective. Today's soap note is all about self care for the entrepreneur. In an environment full of hard work, busy days, and late nights, It may seem like a luxury to take some well-deserved me time, but the truth is it's totally the opposite. Working self-care techniques into your daily life will have a wonderful impact on your ability to be creative and innovative wherever you might land or go. If you don't know me, I am Amity Cooper, your host and creator of The Soap News. As a trained clinician, I really benefited from applying the soap note method in my practice. So when I started C3, I thought it would be a fun way to craft a blog series that incorporated the same principles as the soap note. What better way to get updates, tips, inspiration, and reviews about relevant on-point clinical and business topics affecting our industry today. So let's get to it. It can be easy to get caught up in the constant hustle mindset when you're an entrepreneur. The work never really stops and it's up to you to create your own boundaries. Many find themselves worn out and poorly rested, writes Stephanie Lee in What Self-Care Really Looks Like for an Entrepreneur. She argues that self-care does not make you weak. It's necessary in order to keep your business running long term without being miserable. Putting yourself in a high-stress situation for days on end can have terrible effects on your health, work, relationships, and life. It's important to take a step back and look at the bigger picture. Most business owners have a big to-do list every day. For example, we have emails to answer, calls to make, and tasks to complete that feel urgent and pressing. Oftentimes, self-care gets pushed off for another day. But over time, this can damage your career and mental health for the long run. Without taking the time to rejuvenate ourselves, how can we expect to become truly engaged and put the energy into our work and life? A Harvard Business Review article says it best. Mustering your resources to try hard requires burning energy in order to overcome your current low arousal level. This is called upregulation. It also exacerbates exhaustion. Thus, the more imbalanced we become due to overworking, the more value there is in activities that allow us to return to a state of balance. By making an effort to focus on your own self-care, you will be better equipped to deal with the demanding environment of running your own business. Many entrepreneurs find themselves overworked and riding on very little sleep and have come to see this state of being as a natural part of the job. But Deep Patel, an entrepreneur, writes otherwise. It should be no surprise, he says, that extreme fatigue can compromise your performance, but did you know that sleep deprivation can cause impairments that are similar to being drunk? Sleep is vital to our well-being, and it's when our body heals and repairs itself and its keys to supporting healthy brain function, that things look better. Now, who doesn't want a healthy brain, right? Taking the time to get a healthy amount of sleep does wonders for your health while ignoring this need leads to extreme fatigue. The effects of fatigue can at first seem subtle, as if they could be managed with an extra cup of coffee and a little more effort. But even spending this extra effort leads to greater exhaustion and makes the recovery period all the more necessary. Tony Schwartz, CEO of The Energy Project, writes in the New York Times, 
Human beings aren't designed to expend energy continuously. Rather, we're, re we're meant to pulse between spending and recovering en energy. And Jim Lohr, a sports psychologist and peak performance coach to executives, expands on this concept. In his research, he and his team coined the term oscillation, this titration between focused mental and physical attention and force and a whole body, mind, and ritualistic recovery. Rather than focusing on a linear, driven self-care routine, Laura recommends intense sprints of mental exertion followed by valleys of active recovery. Successful entrepreneurs that know, hands down, that a strong mental game is just one piece of the overall success puzzle. As the workforce returns to the office, the rules of team management and company's overall approach to the health of its employees is about to be upended. For most innovators and entrepreneurs, you could be part of a team, and it's your responsibility to set an example for everyone else. As a leader, if you don't have your mental game under control, you are more prone to burnout. There's more mental health overwhelm and exhaustion. Returning to work may seem like a sign that things are returning to normal, but the pandemic has opened the door to new and often opposing ideas of what self-care should look like in the future. Let's take a moment to look at some successful entrepreneurs who know just how important self-care is and how they are taking their mental health into their own hands. Hopefully you can find some inspiration to figure out what would be the best way to add to your own routine. Now, forgive me if I brutally um, mispronounce these names. Just bear with me. Reshma, Reshma Saujani, CEO of Girls Who Code, insists that me time should be written into her daily schedule. During that hour, half hour or so, she is free to pursue whatever activity she chooses so long as it's not related to work. Allowing yourself some space for flexibility, self-directed fun, or quiet help, quiet, excuse me, helps you to gather your thoughts and check in with yourself. Bill Gates, for example, is known to take a think week to read books and spend time in the forest. He also spends an hour reading before bed. A great suggestion to do. Taking some time for yourself helps you gain back some of your energy and allows you to space you allows you to create space for new ideas to flourish. Sometimes this can be used to gain inspiration, but often we just need time to unwind and decompress and not think about other things like work. John Mackey, the CEO of Whole Foods Market, encourages people to nourish their bodies. He lives a vegan lifestyle and brings his own rice cooker whenever he travels. Eating healthy helps your body maintain energy and increases your focus and productivity. Deep Patel writes again about the importance of enjoying a hobby and notes that Stefan Gillett, Chronicle uh, co-founder and CEO and former of CIO of Starbucks, finds time in his daily routine for multiplayer gaming. I never knew this. Uh, Gillette, who is a top guild master in the online role-playing game World of Warcraft, has found the lessons he has learned in the gaming world translate really well into the real-world leadership training. By blowing off steam and having fun, Gillette is able to have fun and interact with the world in a creative way. Finding hobbies that make you happy can also open you up to new ideas and relaxes your mind. For example, Warren Buffett, CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, makes time to play the ukulele. Engaging in fun activities forces your mind to stop working for a while so that you can decompress and allow your mind to wander. Okay, one last example. Jeff Weiner, CEO of LinkedIn, tries to be in the moment. He personally uses guided meditation exercises through mental health apps and entrepreneurs are especially susceptible to isolation and loneliness, as we all know, and mindfulness, foc mindfulness activities focusing on the moment-to-moment -moment experiences allows people to take a step back from the deadlines and pressures that are often related with um, everyday business management. So it allows you to connect in a deeper way to yourself and to others. 
by creating Headspace. These are just some great examples of entrepreneurs working on their self-care routines. Now let's talk about some ways in which you can nourish your own mental health through self-care practices. Although self-care should be practiced by all, each person has different needs to fulfill and our self-care routines should reflect that. At its core, self-care is any intentional act and decision that places you and your needs at the forefront, writes Lee. It's not enough to simply stop working. To really start to heal, you need to find what makes you happy. In an environment full of activities and engagements and networking opportunities, it can be hard to keep your schedule full of activities you actually want to participate in. Learning how to say no is an invaluable skill. And I'm just going to add that um, becoming the master of your calendar really is a wonderful first exercise into set, setting and controlling your time in which you will be on and off. As Deep Patel writes, this is perhaps the most important thing to remember if you're a people pleaser trying to juggle a hectic schedule. It may seem impossible to push back, but you can say no. And when you do it, it will profoundly be liberating. And a great way to do that is to manage your time through your calendar. We can't be everywhere at once, nor should we want to be. Choose where you want to spend your time and energy. It's your choice to begin with. You dictate it. You don't have an unlimited supply. It's okay to decline and spend the time on your own, doing your own ideal activities. Some find that going for a run each morning helps to focus their energy and keeps them in shape. Staying active forces you to apply yourself mentally and physically because it's a joint effort. For example, Richard Branson, founder of the Virgin Group, credits his career success to being beginning each day with exercise such as tennis, bicycling, and kite serving. Other suggestions are to keep a daily gratitude journal and eating a meal without your phone. You could get a massage to help you relax, put it on your calendar, or maybe even hire an assistant to delegate tasks to. Another great suggestion. Take a look at your routine. What do you think you're missing? And what do you think you need? Fulfilling those needs first is self-care at its finest. Oprah Winfrey encourages people to practice mindfulness. She writes, meditation is about getting still enough to know the difference between the voice and you. It's a heightened state of being that lets whatever you're doing be your best life. From moment to moment. <sighs> Although self-care should be practiced by all. Each person has different needs to fulfill and our self-care routines should reflect that. At its core, self-care is any intentional act and decision that places you and your needs at the forefront. It's not enough to simply stop working. To really start to heal and to care for oneself, you need to find what makes you happy. In an environment full of activities and engagements and networking opportunities. It can be hard to keep your schedule full and you actually wanting to participate in it. Learning to say no is an invaluable skill. And as Deep Patel writes again, this is perhaps the most important thing to remember. If you're a people pleaser trying to juggle a hectic schedule, it may seem impossible to push back, but you can say no. And when you do it, you will be profoundly liberated. We can't be everywhere at once, of course, nor should we want to be. Choosing where you want to spend your time and energy an essential, is an essential key foundational element to self-care. We don't have unlimited supplies of time. And it's okay to decline an invitation and do something different that feeds you rather than takes from you. Some finding 
that if they go for a run each morning or devoting time to exercise actually puts them in the right frame of mind to achieve more. So take that into consideration. Marking out in your calendar power hours that are ritualistic, that you know that you can always depend on, and arranging your day to serve yourself first before serving others could make a huge difference where it's automatically writing self-care into your daily routine. And on the back end, others suggest keeping a daily gratitude journal. Now, this can be really helpful, especially when you're winding down at the end of the day. You can take notice, take pause in the things that you've accomplished and set yourself up for the next day's activities. And while you're at it, it's been shown that the more we build a gratitude practice, the more optimistic, the more productive, the more happy we become. So that is another uh, takeaway from self-care, this self-care soap note. Another thing is um, you could get a massage to help you relax and even consider figuring out, taking stock of the activities that you do on a daily basis that could be delegated, delegated out instead of you adding more to your to-do list. The more you can give away and automate, the easier It is for your brain to disengage and open up to more creative mental inspiration activities, things that heighten your awareness and give you space and breath to make connections that otherwise would not be seen or discovered if you're so focused on your daily to-dos. Take a look at your routine, what you think you're missing and what you think you need. Fulfilling those needs is self-care, even if it's not what you traditionally expect. And I'm going to leave you with this message. Oprah Winfrey encouraged people to practice mindfulness. She writes, meditation is about getting still enough to know the difference between the voice and you. It's a heightened state of being that lets whatever you're doing to be your best life from moment to astonishing moment. By focusing on the present and making an effort to take care of your mental health, your relationships and work will benefit in the long run. Lastly, if you're interested in learning more about the new and cutting edge technologies affecting our mental health practices today, then I'd like to invite you to register for a monthly SOAP newsletter. With the subscription, you will receive a monthly review of all the weekly SOAP notes Gain access to members-only interviews and conversations with special guest speakers, and you will have the chance to purchase our monthly soapbox that contains products, coupons, and discounts to all our mentioned items reviewed in the SoapNote recordings. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time.